Hi everyone, Chantel here. In this video, I will be showing you all how to make a bib. Well, one of the bibs that I make. This right here is one that I've already made. This is actually in, for an order. There's gonna be two different colors, so you know everything doesn't be floral. It'll be this pretty fabric right here which I actually got this from Joann's and this is terry cloth I got from Joann's as well all of this I got from Joann's you'll need of course let me move that out the way you'll need the pattern some fabric scissors pins and iron and you will need some cam snaps i got this off of amazon it's been a while since i got it so i cannot tell you how much i paid for it i do not remember uh, but everything it came filled everything was full and i've had this for a couple of years i know it's been more than two years so i'm not sure if they still sell it but it actually came with this and this and it was i know that it wasn't expensive this is what you use to poke the hose it comes with it as well sorry and it comes with this and i'll show you how to do that once we get to that point now the pattern i want to talk to you all about that before we begin i actually made my own pattern i didn't purchase it and what you can do is you can take any bib it does not matter what kind of bib but you can take any bib and you'll place it on some paper this is cardstock it took two sheets of the 12 by 12s and what you do is you, you put the bib on there and you draw out like you trace it and then you draw out about an inch to two inches out further than what the original bib line is so that actually makes up for the oh what's that word i'm drawing a blank here the stitch line oh i'm so sorry about that <laughs> but yes i do a one-fourth inch stitch line so this actually makes up for it and it is a little bigger as well but this right here it still fits it can fit from a newborn all the way up to two years old and i've made all of my children's bibs and burp cloths which i will make a video for you all on how to make a burp cloth as well super simple super super easy you don't have to buy a pattern you don't have to do any of that now, what you do not see is the sewing machine. You do need a sewing machine for this. You can't glue the stuff together because, of course, it has to be washed, like, a lot. So, cams, cam snaps, fabric, pattern, pins, fabric scissors, iron, and a sewing machine. That's what you'll need. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to lay out your fabric. I'm going to try to make sure this video is not super long. So some things I will skip through so you do not have to sit there and watch me do it. So what I actually do is I fold my fabric in half because I make two of each pattern. So to keep me from having to cut so much at different times, I can just do it all at once. Right, so what you're going to do is you're gonna take your printed fabric. Of course, you see I folded my terry cloth, I laid it down. Doesn't matter what side that is on because they're both exactly the same. Your pattern fabric, you're going to turn inside out. And 
fold it if it's like a one okay i'm so sorry about that the video cut off and i did not know that it cut off but i already drew the pattern on and what i was saying before it cut off was that when you're drawing your pattern if you have directional fabric so best example if you have fabric with arrows and if your arrows are going this way then you need to make sure that you place your pattern going in the exact same direction as that so with folding it in half it may not work because you have directional fabric and it has to go that exact way but mine, it's fine Mommy, like this. Mine, I don't have to worry about that. So I can just draw it on. But I actually got these drawn on. And then I went on my terry cloth and I drew that as well. So everything is already drawn on. I hope I explained good enough about the directional fabric. So, I am actually going to go ahead and cut this out, and I will be right back. All right, so now I have everything cut out. So, next, what you're going to want to do, or well, what you need to do, is get your fabric, and you're going to place them right sides together. Remember, the terry cloth doesn't have a specific side. But since I drew on this side, this is going to go down. Once I'm finished sewing it together, it will be inside. Alright, now everything is matched up. So now what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to take your pins and you're going to pin it all together. And I like to use colors that is opposite from what's right here. Pin it all together, make sure the sides are lined up and I will not make you watch me do this. I will actually skip through this so you do not have to watch me. Okay, so I got everything pinned together. And just so you can see, I pin it like that because you know, when you're going around the curves and stuff, which I'll start down here to leave that pocket open to turn it inside out. But this right here, I make sure that I pin it going around because that's the part that likes to shift. This and those up there. All right, so next step is sewing. Okay, so when you're sewing, make sure that you have either a matching color or a color that is actually inside of the pattern that you're using. And I am actually be going to be using white thread for my bobbin and on the top. I like to do the contrasting colors basically to bring it out. So I'm going to use white thread instead of a light pink. And this is what my settings are on. This is a different machine. If you've been watching my videos, this is not the, the usual sewing machine that I use. This is actually my embroidery machine. And it is sewing and embroidery. But this is what the factory settings are once you turn it on and I actually turn that down 
and I put this all the way down to three. Now, this is how I do it. You don't have to do it like I do it, but this is how I do it. All right, so what you're going to do, I'm gonna try to get as close as I can. What you're going to do is you're going to start stitching and then you're going to back stitch. Always, always back stitch when you're making something, okay? So now, I'm going to go ahead and start sewing. Now, I'm not going to do this the entire time, because like I said, I don't want my video to be too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back once I have gotten both of them sewn together and show you how to turn it right side out. So I will be right back. Okay, so I got it all stitched together. Make sure that you get every single pin out. And be careful so you do not poke yourself. All right, now the next thing you will do is you will take your scissors and you will do small clips right in there. Be sure not to cut the thread. You'll clip right here and right there as well. Of course, I'm not going to because I actually stitch pretty close, but if you're, you know, you're, you're not wanting to stitch that close and you want a, a farther seam allowance, then you know you'll need to cut right here just like a simple clip with the scissors so when you fold it when you bring it the right sides out it will not be all bulky and everything right here so let's go ahead and turn these right side out Now, what I do when I am pulling these out, I actually take my finger and I push it through and I press up against that end. I mean, you can use a pencil or the end of a paintbrush. Don't use anything like really pointy scissors or something like that because then it'll poke a hole in it that's why i use my finger for this and then it's actually big enough for my finger to go in and i just you know just wiggle it through see and voila Okay, so now is when you use the iron. What you want to do is you want to fold that bottom piece in, the part where you turned it around. Well, the, the open part, obviously, you know that. And you're going to fold it in top and bottom. I'll get it closer so you can see going to fold that in just like that you're going to get your iron and you're going to iron right over it it's to help because after we iron it we're actually going to sew it again around here and it's basically the same thing but with this part you will start where the open where the open end is so my opening begins right here so i'll start a little bit further over to this side you see you just you make sure everything is nice and turned out and then you iron it flat 
and you just, you know, you're gonna do the same with this one over here. Now I, I am going to show you how you begin to sew just in case, you know, there are some people that don't know and me just saying it is not a, you know, good enough example or explanation. So I would rather make sure that you completely understand everything that you're supposed to do and not be left with any questions. So we got all that iron down. Aren't they looking cute already? I think I'm gonna use white cam buttons for these so it can stand out like the white flowers are doing. All right, so let's sew them clothes. We're almost finished. Okay, so let's go ahead and stitch this together. We're, it's going to be the same settings as the last time. Leave it at the same settings. Of course, mine, it automatically goes back to it when you cut it off. So we're going to lower the pressure foot. And let's begin sewing. Remember, back stitch, back stitch, back stitch. Right now, I'm sewing up that open end. I'm sorry about that. My handle fell. It scared me. <laughs> this is when you would actually add your business tags. Mine have not come in yet. So these will not have any of them on there. This full complete order will not have any, which I hate that. But as you can see, you just, you start stitching and you just go all the way around. And I will be right back once I get back over here and we'll start to do the snaps. Okay, I have gotten to where I started. So basically my starting point. So this is what you're going to do. You're gonna stitch a little bit. You're going to overlap where you began. And then you're going to back stitch. Back stitch. And then go forward again. I'm gonna cut the thread. Raise the foot. And there we go. Okay, so I have everything sewn together and you can see that this one right here, it's flat. This right here, it's wavy. This happens, I mean, it's nothing bad or anything. You didn't do anything wrong. It just, it, it happens. Um, I actually ironed this one down already. This is another reason why you would need an iron for this. I already ironed this one down so you can see the difference in it. This was complete like right after I got finished sewing it and this is already iron pressed down. So all you need to do is just iron it down. But aren't they so cute already? I'm like super excited for this. And this customer, she actually ordered a baby blanket, a canopy, and the bibs and burp cloths. So I made sure everything matched. They went, you know, cohesively together. But you see, now it's, it's good and flat. See, no worries. All right, so now, it is time to do the cam snaps. This is all we have to do and we'll be completely done now. I'm so proud of y'all. Especially if you've held on this long, cause I know sometimes it'd be frustrating, especially on the first time. I had to rip thread so many times because I kept messing up. And your stitch does not have to be perfect, but just get it as good as you can it's handmade you're not a machine 
nothing will be absolutely perfect. So there's no problem with that at all. As long as you do your best and you put all the love in it that you can. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to take these. You're going to overlap them. You're going to take your pick. You're going to poke it right through. Try to find a good spot. And I just, I, I wiggle it to kind of like open it up some more. Can you see the hose? Okay, make sure that the other bibs are the same on how you do it. If this one is overlapping this one on the other bib, make sure that they all match because you don't want some that's like this and others that are like that. Okay, so you have the hose. Now what you're going to do is you're going to get your cam snaps. You're going to need one for each of these. So I'll grab four out. These are plastic. Not sure if you can tell, but these are plastic. I've used the metal and I've used the plastic and I like the plastic better. Now this is the female snap you're going to need one over here you're going to need one for this one and i always put these underneath right there and i'll show you the male all right and these are the males so you can see they poke out Okay, so you're going to take this, you're going to poke it through. I always make sure that the circle is on top for the male cam snap. You can't really see this one because it's white on white on the back, but you're going to match up that hole with that one. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to set it right in there. You got to get it right in there. Hopefully, you can see it. And squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. I press and press and press. And I do it twice. I do it this way. And then I let it loose, let it turn. And then I do it again that way. So you can see. I make sure I do it double. Because I would rather it be put together like as tight as possible than for anything to pop off when they're unsnapping it or snapping it back on their baby. So for this one, you're going to pull it around to this side. The circle goes on the opposite side. Now you're going to take the female. You're going to match the hose up. You can see it on this one match the hose up you're going to do the exact same thing press 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 now you don't have to do it twice but i do it twice if you've watched my other videos as i always say quality is better than quantity now you have it on there and you do a test clip. That's how you know it's in. The first time it was not in. And then you'll hear it. That's how you know it is in. Okay, so I'm going to do this other one and then we are going to go outside and see how they all look together. Woo! And here they are. Don't they look cute?